Hi guys from Pax Europeana, this time now on my birthday. Hi guys, <laughs> thanks a lot, 53. I will talk about the Grameen platform and the summit, which is happening today on my birthday, 23rd, and on the 30th uh, anniversary of Ukraine independence in Kiev. There is this uh, famous Grameen platform and it's very good. You know? It's very good to remind the world on the crimes of Russia, on this illegal Anschluss, the annexation of Crimea, something the world should have done also when it was about the Austrian Anschluss with Germany, because it's very similar. It is this typical kind of uh, finding a historic context, having the power and then uh, do the annexation of um, a territory which belongs to another state or was previously independent and then big powers swallow it because the other big powers are not ready to go to war and uh, to stop them. And so that has happened a lot of time in history. That's what empires generally do. And it's a crime, obviously. And it's the very much the watershed moment of the end of uh, the post-Cold War peace order. It is this criminal act of Russia in 2014 and the consequent uh, then the crime of the Donbass war and all these things. Yeah. So it is very good that the world is active and is uh, pointing the finger in the open wound. And it's also completely unacceptable, absolutely, and it will be never recognized as legally Russians. So this uh, summit is very good. And, but I call on all who come to think yeah, we have and also to have a smart strategy. Because in real terms, it means in the terms of uh, reconquering or reintegrating of, uh, of um, Crimea and of uh, occupied Donbass, we can do practically about nothing because Russia is an independent power it's in own right it has nuclear weapons it has 1.7 trillion GDP it has its resources it needs it has other partners in the world to support it you know we cannot force Russia into returning these territories there is no military way there is no economic way to achieve that there is no way and the hope that Russia voluntarily will return these territories easily, like uh, Putin will think about it and say, ah, I did a mistake. Uh, I mean, you yourself don't believe that. Yeah, It's absolutely unrealistic. Crimea, of course, it was never Russian in that sense. It was Turkish. It was uh, before, um, uh, yeah, it was basically a Turkish territory. Then it was shortly independent after this uh, famous treaty of 1774, of this very uh, difficult uh, treaty to pronounce, Kuchuk Karnak or whatever, Karnak Kuchuk. No matter when the Russians defeated the, the Ottomans and basically they were the real power. They basically took this role from the Habsburg Empire, the defeater and container, <laughs> containment power of Ottoman Empire. They was, uh, were stronger, they defeated, then uh, Crimea was independent shortly and then they basically annexed it uh, to Russia already back then. You can call it the first annexation. And that is the history. And then it was always in the Russian Empire, later turned Soviet Union, internally then shifted uh, towards, uh, the, uh, towards Ukraine in 56. And then it was recognized by Russia as part of Ukraine several times. So it's absolutely illegal what the Russians are doing. But we cannot force Russia, we cannot seduce Russia into submission, we cannot blackmail or somehow um, boycott Russia into uh, returning it. So we have to be also realistically, and I see now, and the Biden administration is really very tough realistic in that one. So they are very tough realistic in Afghanistan with the fall of Kabul and this kind of get out fast. They don't want uh, such kind of entanglements uh, in uh, the Middle East, it seems. And uh, they are seemingly less and less ready also uh, to contain Russia in Eastern Europe. So it's really very important uh, to make uh, some kind of strategic choices. That's why I posted as well today, uh, this day, this historic day, not my birthday, but the Crimean platform day, to be realistic. The reintegration of Crimea cannot uh, happen so easily. And it will happen in the next um, kind of fall of Russia. I am confident it will come in the 2040s or whenever. Maybe into 2030s, but it's not imminent. And now what is really imminent, and that should be also the care of the policy makers in, in uh, Kiev, 
and in the whole of Ukraine and in Europe and in America is that the Ukrainians, the 37 million Ukrainians which live in Ukraine and that their future is secure. And uh, you see it very much with the fall of Kabul only inside uh, NATO you have safety and security if you are fragile by referee nation. Obviously Switzerland is a bit different, you know, and um, others maybe uh, Ireland is a different geography and a different history. Both of them should also join NATO, no doubt, and Austria first of all. But the point I want to make here in this video is that uh, the realistic uh, foreign policy set in a very contentious America where the Trump administration was very much with Russia and the Russians have very much intervened in the American elections 2016, 2020, maybe already 2012. The possibility that uh, Ronald Reagan will arise from the GOP under so much Russian and Trumpian influence is very limited. So the probability we have to work with Biden, he is anyhow a very effective president. But the most probable outcome is that he will be re-elected in 2024. So I uh, wish him health and happiness, but that is the most realistic outcome. So to work with this kind of uh, more realistic uh, uh, foreign policy establishment, which are, is not controversial, but they want to have settlements and they want to have um, lasting settlements, to come uh, then, uh, you know, obviously Crimean platform is very good to work on human rights of the Crimean Tatars and all people in Crimea because it's also part of the Council of Europe, Russia, and uh, should keep up all these rights. Yeah? But the real thing, which is now important, is to settle Ukraine like the German question post uh, World War II. There is a division, a de facto division, and as it was in the German case. So Germany is the role model for Ukraine. I know the Ukrainians did nothing wrong. They didn't commit any World War II and there were no Nazis and all these things. Don't get me wrong and don't compare that. We have to see there were different phases in German history. And I'm talking in the phase from 47 when the Americans decided for the reconstruction of Germany in the Joint St uh, Chief Staff Directive. I don't forgot the number now by heart. But it is important to see that uh, February decision and then in July 47 when Germany was... Uh, and when the Americans decided to reconstruct Germany after they found out they um, they will not join uh, the uh, the Soviets don't keep their part of the Yalta promises basically they have realized it also there was this hunger crisis that the situation was desperate and then uh, McClay and the others they decided then uh, to and Marshall and Truman and Atchison and all these great uh, American leaders they decided to reconstruct uh, Germany and then they went in for the price liberalization the currency reform in 48 uh, the Soviet counteracted with the blockade uh, of Berlin and then the airlift was the result and then basically gradually the whole confrontation shifted away from the European theater again to Korea because uh, he, Stalin was in a way blocked because the Americans were too adamantly defending Western uh, Germany and they were allowing it in this economic integration system starting the EU. This was also very much an American idea and the American project via Monet they supported uh, this action committee to have a um, European Union modeled after the United States of America out of the Western allies or Western occupied uh, free Western European states. Yeah? And so that's basically the short nutshell of the history. And then came also the Marshall Fund, the EIP Fund, the OECD and also the Council of Europe and all the others. You know that very well. And then ultimately NATO 49 and then uh, the Western German membership. So that's all very important to know because the same mechanisms now has to apply. It's now division time. Division uh, is better than defeat. Do you really want uh, Russia attacking further? Do you really want to test the mettle of Biden in the case of a uh, next invasion? And do you really want a uh, full-scale confrontation? I can now, after this summer, uh, with the Nord Stream 2 deal and with the fall of Kabul, I can say the appetite in America for uh, uh, securing Ukraine and uh, having a um, full-scale confrontation is very limited. So the appetite for division is much higher, is my estimation. Division obviously meaning Ukraine in NATO, free Ukraine in NATO. And uh, that is what I call division. 
It's not uh, to keep uh, what Russia already has and give nothing to Ukraine. <laughs> and so we have to start the cadence of things exactly like they were in that years. Because the easiest thing to change is the currency. Because the NATO membership, you need uh, 30 allies to consent. Yeah? And Russia has influence and some others have uh, serious concerns. Yeah? So that can only be the second uh, stage after uh, this currency situation. So Ukraine has to adopt the euro. That's the equivalent of the German mark back to the dollar. That was 48, the currency reform. Ukraine now has to adopt the euro unilateral by itself. And that's very important. So in, uh, in Crimea there is the ruble, in Eastern Donbass there is the ruble, I suppose, I think as well. I don't know, but mostly it will be. Maybe there is also, because of the governmental transfers in the pension and social assistance, there is also the Rivna. But I'm sure the secondary currency there is uh, the ruble as well. So, and in Ukraine, in free Ukraine, it's the euro. And that must be going very fast. And the step then after that one is, of course, to coordinate with the Americans uh, the borderization, because there is a lot of talk against borderization. But again, I ask all the Ukrainian decision makers, what is more important, unity or NATO membership? This was the choice for the Germans after World War II as well. Unity offered by Stalin because he, even him, and also all other of his successors after he died in 53, they all offered to the Western Germany uh, the same deal like for Austria. It was called unity for neutrality. That is the so-called Stalin notes. And the whole debate about that one from uh, basically when there was a stalemate in uh, Korea, uh, when the Americans were uh, uh, back forward and the Chinese have intervened, then the Americans stabilized the front and so it was stalemate. And then he offered all these things back in the European front, the so-called Stalin notes. The Western Germans, they saw, uh, together with the American uh, superiors, if you want to call, or allies, they said that that was strategically an absolute disaster for the West, because it was threatening that Germany and the Benelux countries and the Atlantic uh, would be the, the border for the Soviet Empire very soon. And there was also this ongoing crisis in France and the communist trench, and so a lot of problems. And the 6th of May crisis, a crisis the so-called exclusion crisis, I mean, and then it was very clear that that is not what is in the American and in the Western German interest, and the Western Germans really didn't want that. Yeah, And of course, some of the left wanted it because they loved uh, communism and they thought it is maybe a good system. But then came 53, obviously, and the 17th June, and the uh, violent suppression of the workers in and the resistance movement in Eastern Germany, and then there was anyhow no talk anymore so much about neutrality, unity, because blood was spilled. Uh, by innocent uh, for uh, innocent blood of the workers of Eastern Germany was built by the Soviet Union just to keep their power position and so it got very clear and then Western Germany joined NATO against the will of the French against a lot of hesitations of everybody else but the Americans and the Germans decided it and implemented it and similar it has to happen now in Ukraine I don't see any other reasonable settlement, because otherwise Ukraine, uh, with this kind of focus on unity, it will not join uh, NATO, because obviously we cannot make a security guarantee for Ukraine, including uh, Crimea and including uh, the Donbass. What do you think, that we immediately send in the nuclear weapons uh, to liberate these territories or invade? That is absolutely out of the question. It will never happen. And it is absolutely not what the Americans, and you can see it very visible now in Kabul, in the, in the Nord Stream 2 uh, deal, and in all other, this kind of uh, inability to really impose the will, even on the Bulgarians, even on the Serbs. Yeah? It's not going down the arm wrestling Americans uh, who are imposing their will around. No? no, no, no. There is consolidation on the agenda. There is America is back to consolidate what is realistically doable. We are, in a way, in a complicated period. And uh, that's exactly what is going on. So uh, Ukraine, free Ukraine, can look uh, for the cover of the American security protection, but not as a complicated uh, package attached to Crimea and Donbass. No division. 
is for the moment the better uh, settlement. And of course a lot of pressure on Russia for human rights, for good treatment, but uh, not uh, escalation brought by Ukraine towards America and then please America deal with it and send your tanks. Yeah, This is not going to happen. And everybody who tells the Ukrainians something differently and says, oh, territorial integrity is a very big high priority for the Romanians. I saw the tweet of the Romanian prime minister. Do you think the Romanians will reconquer the Crimea for the Ukraine or help? They will never send any troops to Ukraine. Not just for historic reasons, but they will not do. NATO is a defensive alliance. Why should they? And they are not so strong. Not the Polish, not the Latvians, not the Estonian. Estonian president now, Kersti, went to the front lines. Yeah? That's very good, you know. It should be always kept up. Germany has never given up on Eastern Germany and ultimately got it back. It was always in the constitution. It was never recognized the Eastern Germany as a state. Yeah? It was just a ministry for dealing uh, for inner German affairs. Yeah? And the ambassador of Eastern Germany was accredited not to the foreign ministry, but to that ministry. I mean, that is the compromise they made. But there was some kind of German-German arrangement. <laughs> And this is also, of course, very painful. Uh, but it was necessary, but inside NATO. And this is the real target, uh, to be inside NATO for Ukraine and for Georgia, the same principles, and for Moldova. Because uh, this occupied legacy issues of the Soviet Union from Abkhazia to uh, Ossetia and of course of 2008, but in the times of Transnistria, is all impossible to solve right now. But NATO membership is possible. And then the borders are very clear. These territories are not part of NATO. They are like uh, enclaves of Russia somewhere in Moldova, Georgia, Ukraine. And they will not be recognized by the free world, by our allies. But maybe the, some Chinese will recognize it on the request of Russia. Okay, good. It's bad, but it's nothing we can really do about it. And uh, maybe there will be then a lot of these uh, peaceniks and they say, let's recognize it. That might also happen. But there will be always the offer of unification with Moldova, with um, Ukraine, with Georgia, once uh, as they are already in NATO and in the EU. And on the same way, like Eastern Germany, within one year, they joined NATO, they joined also the MAG, they joined the EU. <laughs> This is uh, in one year. <laughs> From 89 to 99, it was uh, 1990, end of 90, they were bad. <laughs> Unification laws, tuck, 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 it was easy. <laughs> It's not complicated once there is no Soviet Union or no Russia to keep them back anymore. And that's the same role model I support since four years, and I talk so much about it. But then they all say, no, 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 unity is so important. Yeah, unity, if it's an unrealistic fiction, <laughs> yeah. For now, is unity so much more important than the livelihood, security, prosperity, integration in EU and NATO of the 37 million Ukrainians and of the Georgians and the Moldovans uh, respectively? And uh, man, this is much more important. Uh, their future, their security, their prosperity, their wealth, their opportunities, their livelihood. Because many people, let's be also honest, in uh, the occupied territories now after seven years, they have been living in that propaganda. They stayed for there. There was population exchanges as well. There was a lot of people going who didn't like that regime now. And there were a lot of people coming new in the case of Crimea who liked that regime. And so when you then uh, reconquer it theoretically and you say, ah, oh good, you have to go out because you were not here before 2014, that's also a massive human rights problem. Eh? And that's not so easy to do and it's absolutely wrong to do it actually indeed. Yeah? And so in these territories there is a majority for Russia in Crimea, in the eastern Donbass, in that. And this is so if you, of course, there is no freedom now, so you have no good opinion polls and no kind of uh, objectivity to find it out because of the oppression situation. And, but as long as the Russians are putting money in and putting efforts in, I think, and uh, control the situation, it is quite to be expected that the majority there is basically after seven years and then after another ten years, it will be pro-Russian. And how to get the countries then back in by force <laughs> and there will be certainly nobody supporting that and if you dare to do it it will be uh, blocked uh, and you will lose all the support no 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 
this is all totally wrong as it is now and uh, Crimean platform is good to raise the issue but let's be realistic it should be a NATO platform your Ukraine use your capital and uh, to really join NATO and to adopt the euro and to uh, work on your future in the West and the free world this is the most important now this is the priority and nothing else And of course, I feel very much with the Crimean Tatars. I made a lot of activity you can see on YouTube about the Crimean Tatars, human rights and everything else to support them. Yes, 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 yes. Keep the fire burning for freedom of the Crimean Tatars and of all people in Crimea and in Donbass and in Afghazia and everywhere. But not uh, the forced reintegration which they don't want. And certainly not with our help. In reality, what is really the big thing to achieve is NATO membership and EU membership and the Euro the tool. So please focus on that. Good luck for 30 years Ukraine. I'm fully on your side, but I'm for European NATO member Ukraine. I'm not for a unified Ukraine uh, by our military force or yours uh, or to reconquer or something like this. No, no, I'm for NATO membership of free Ukraine only and fast, please. 2024, let's get going. Bye from the rain. All the best. <laughs>